All right, here comes another one. <laughs> nice catch. Dwight, I've caught 37 of these rascals. <laughs> Game's over. Hi, Miss Cordona. Here you go. It's your mom. Hi, mom. Sí, hice mi tarea. Llegaré a la casa después de la cena. Adiós, mommy. Okay, okay. And I don't don't tell me. Uh, let's see. You told your your mother, Madre, that uh, you were gonna be home, uh, casa, uh, later, luego, uh, for dinner, comida, and that you wanted to uh, dance with your room. <laughs> Not quite, Mr. D. Oh. <clears throat> hey, guys, how was Benji? Great. I liked the movie, but Grandpa started throwing raisinets. Oh. <laughs> Again? No, they weren't raisinets. They were little boxes of raisins, plain raisins. There's a difference. The guy beside me was a weirdo. He was about 38 or 40, had kind of bug eyes, real thick glasses. And he was blowing in my ear, saying, Do you hear the ocean? Do you hear the ocean? <laughs> Don't do that to an ex-Marine, man. I took all the raisins. He'd, he'd, they'd eaten a lot of them anyway, and I put them on my face, and I said, Ungo fever, Ungo fever. <laughs> took him out, man. He had a massive coronary. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> well, look, I got you guys something to wear for Western Day tomorrow, huh? Come here, take a look at this. Oh, what, do you, what, do you, what do you think of this, huh? Isn't that a little small for you, Dwight? <laughs> well, just a little. <laughs> Let's see, I have a uh, sheriff's star here. Authentically worn by the sheriff of Taiwan, Wyatt Ho. <laughs> there you go, Ben, you can have that. Wow. And Charlie, you can go as an Indian, huh? Indians didn't wear this stuff. That's right, it's fake. Dyed chicken feathers. <laughs> oh, that. Forget it, I'm not dressing up for Western Day. Why not? I'm dressing up. Big deal, you're in second grade. No one over fifth grade dresses up anymore. No, well, I'm dressing up. That's because you're the principal. That's not why he does it, Regal. He does it because he likes it. Well, here, look, why don't you just put that on? There, there. How do I look? You look great. I feel like Cher. You know, I was just thinking, Dwight, uh, coming out of the movie, kids and I, we met a guy by the name, big guy, big dude, Steve Maxwell, about six feet seven or eight, maybe. Huge. Steve, Steve Maxwell? I tell you, he was a big man, Dwight. Nordic type, maybe six feet seven, six feet eight. Shock of blonde hair. Magnificent looking man. Huge hands, bigger feet. <laughs> ah, yeah, he probably, a, you know, a ski instructor. Either that or just worked in a local foundry. <laughs> At any rate, he was big. Yeah, yeah, you mentioned that. He was with your friend Cosmo. Wait a minute, Cosmo and a Nordic ski instructor went to see Benji? No, no, they came out of a foreign film. To have and have more. <laughs> I don't know, he's Steve Maxwell. I thought Cosmo was going out with you, Dad. 
Well, she she was. I mean, she she did. We we did. Uh, but you know, Cosmo, she's free to go to the movies with whoever she wants. We've only gone out a couple of times. You know, uh, when I said goodbye to this guy, yeah, he grabbed my hand. I got a small hand, anyway, as you know, Dwight. And he shook it, and I went right to my knees. <laughs> My best Norwegian only had one line. We only lived in Duluth one one week, and I I looked up at him and I said, "Nor have ever seen you remember. You are truly a handsome man." I, mean, I, I don't have the right, do I? I mean, I've only gone out with her a couple of times. I don't have the right to. Question Cosmo about who she went with to see some steamy French movie. You ever heard of a guy named Steve Maxwell? Steve Maxwell? No. <laughs> so we're not going to get to these test scores today. Okay, I'm sorry. Let's go. French movies are very sexy. Test scores or sex? Guys, make up your minds. All right, come on, let's get serious. I mean, there's no real rush for these scores, is there? I think you should talk to her. Yeah, why do you say that? Because I think you will anyways, and this way I can be right. I'm going to see her tonight, and I, I don't even know what to say to her. Say, my son saw you at the movie with another man. Do you like me better? <laughs> This is stupid. I mean, I've only gone out with this woman three times. Uh, I'm just being indulgent. She goes to the movie with a friend, and I turn into Woody Allen. Come on. I love Woody Allen. Woody Allen? He's genius. Japanese man loves Woody Allen. Really? He's very respected. We call him Tensai. Tensai means genius? Yes. It can also mean natural disaster. <laughs> Why don't you guys quit hanging up on that girl? Uh, you want to talk to Debbie Kessler? Just talk to her. We don't want to talk to her. Yeah, we just wanted her to know if she was home. Yeah. <laughs> I know where Debbie Kessler lives. She has a sister who is friends with Louise. Yeah? Well, we know where she lives, too. Good. Then I don't have to tell you. <laughs> Harding Drive. 63 Harding Drive. It's locked in, it's stored. 63 Harding Drive. This is it. Wow, her father must be a bank teller. Do you think they have guard dogs? I don't think so. They'd already be barking. I don't think anybody's home. Me neither. It's split. Come on, Rigo. We're here. Let's just knock. What if they are home? Then we'll talk to whoever answers the door and see if Debbie's here. Well, what if she is? Maybe she'll come to the door. Maybe we should call first. We have called 50 times. We always hang up. How come I'm nervous in here, not? Because you like her more. Let's just ring the doorbell. What's the worst that could happen? Her old man could answer the door. What if he works for the power company at night and sleeps during the day and we wake him up? What if he comes after us with his jackhammer? Okay, okay, okay. Enough, enough, enough. Please. I enjoyed seeing you make the last circle around the train. No, 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 no. Let me tell you something. Do you know what you've just done in racing around like that? Outside are 1,700 buffalo grazing. But they're not grazing anymore. Because you're yelling and screaming, going around this little table here. You know what they've done? They've destroyed the housing project next door. <laughs> Aren't you curious? Okay, let it go. Um, so, uh... Did you go to Debbie Kessler's yet? 
None of your business. They would never go there. Hey, Charlie, in my house, fourth graders aren't even allowed to talk. See, they didn't go. Yes, we did. Yeah, we even rang the doorbell. Debbie Kessler's doorbell. You did? What'd you do then, run away? No, we didn't run away. No one was home. Yeah, we rang the doorbell, no one answered, and we ran away. As simple as that. Are you telling me that you two clowns really ran away? It was getting late, Grandpa. It was getting late, Grandpa. <laughs> Let me give you a little advice. When you approach Debbie, approach her as gentlemen. Start to talk to her, man, from here. Talk to her from here and here. But just remember this. Find out if she has a 50-year-old sister. Grandpa's right. If you don't go back, you're not worthy of Debbie Kessler. Cowpoke's heart. <laughs> David Paco, that's great, huh? Peace among nations. <laughs> hey, hey, Jeremy, don't forget to pick up after your horse now. <laughs> hey, Louise, how you doing? <laughs> that's great, honey. That's great. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> that's it, honey. You can go on to class now. <laughs> go on. Mm. <laughs> Mary, where are the textbook requests? They didn't come in yet, but here, here's an expediting form. Do they work? Of course not. Oh. <laughs> nice parenting. <laughs> Little baby, are you okay? Oh, no, you're not. One of your eyes popped out. <laughs> here you go, here you go. Hello, Miss Jurgen. Hi. Who do we have here? We have little Chief Ketchako. He doesn't want to wear a shirt. He says Indians just don't wear shirts. Well, actually, they don't. You know, Indians, they, they lived off the land. But Indians are very resourceful. And when they uh, couldn't live off the land, they lived off the lost and found. <laughs> Let's see what we have here. Oh, here's something. Yeah, that looks about right. You trap a medium. <laughs> There you go. Thank you, Principal yeah. Davis. Uh, no problem, Miss Jurgen. So I'll see you tonight. Oh, okay. right. Do uh, you still want to? Yeah, if you do. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I think I'm free tonight. <clears throat> Good. Good. See you later, Steve. <laughs> you think she knew? If she didn't, she's too dumb to date. <laughs> Silverware, napkins. Candlestick holders. Plates. <laughs> well, Cosmo, it looks like you bought everything for dinner except the food. Well, I thought there might be some here in your kitchen. Oh, well, have a look. <sighs> you feel like Italian? Sure, Italian's fine. Good. I've got some uh, macaroni and cheese. <laughs> Perfect. <clears throat> Are you OK? No, I'm great. <clears throat> No, you're not. You're dying to know who I was with at the movies. Oh, that. <laughs> I'd forgotten all about that. <laughs> but if you want to tell me, uh, you know, feel free. Look, Steve Maxwell is my friend. He isn't my boyfriend. He's not my type. He's too classically good looking. God, what a turn off. <laughs> I, I felt bad after we saw Gunny, because I knew he'd tell you, but I sort of like the idea of you being distressed over me. I, I know that's twisted, but it's the truth. I wasn't in distress. 
Well, <laughs> you were a, a little bothered. I was curious. All right, you were curious. It feels good to have a man be curious. Yeah, not for the man. <laughs> oh, I get it. Curious is your word for jealous. Mm. Let me ask you something, Cosmo. I'm just uh, curious. Um, <laughs> what would you feel, cheers, if uh, you saw me out at the movies with another woman? Hmm? I wouldn't care at all. <clears throat> what kind of woman? <laughs> Any woman. How, how, how many women are you involved with? Cosmo. Well, women can be curious, too. Mm -hmm. You've probably used that macaroni and cheese line a lot. I haven't. Last time it was those little frozen pizzas. I swear. I swear. Good. Because if you said macaroni and cheese to another woman, I'd be hurt for years. <laughs> I promise you, I'll never, ever use that macaroni and cheese line on another woman. As long as we both shall live. Oh, I, I must have come in at a bad time. Um, <laughs> I just uh, wanted to tell you the truth to get a cool glass of water, but what I'll do is just, uh, I'll go out back and drink off the hose. You're, um, you're more than welcome to join us, Gunny. Yeah, come on, Dad, join come on. us. Uh, <laughs> Come on. Gosh, this is a beautiful setting. I remember my mom used to have a tablecloth like this. It came from Ireland. At least they, they said it was. I, I think there was a guy who made it in therapy. <laughs> Gosh, just, just one thing is missing is an extra plate. Well, why don't we just use the one in your head? What I'll do is just go over and rinse it off. It's kind of tough, but... <laughs> what do we do? Throw this. What if I break the window? Oh, throw it out the window. Throw it at the side of the house. Right. Here, you throw. I can't throw. I won't even hit the house. You throw better than I do. Just do it. Who's down there? I'm Rigo. And me, Robbie Davis. Did you guys break my window? It was an accident. We'll pay for it. <laughs> Pretty good arm. How come you didn't go out for football? I did. I got cut the first day. My helmet made me claustrophobic. <laughs> What are you guys doing here? Say something to her. He's got laryngitis. He can't talk. Say something to her. You've been waiting your whole life to talk to her. There she is. Say something. to lie, but I learned it for you. <laughs> Wait a second. I'm coming down. Where are you going? You got to split it, man. I can't talk to that. You've got her right where you want her. Talk to her, Rigo. She likes you. Talk to her about what? Anything. Tell her you like her outfit. That's a beautiful dress. <laughs> <laughs> 
Thank you. Love the Seahawks. Jeff Craig's my idol. Do you like football? No. Oh. That's okay. You don't have to both like football. You know, singing to me and breaking my window was the most romantic thing that's ever happened to me in my whole life. Well, I was the one who broke the window. <laughs> Regal picks the rock. I mean, most boys are so immature. Like, they call up on the phone and then hang up. <laughs> they won't even talk to me. <laughs> but you'd talk to me if you called me. Wouldn't you, Rico? Oh, yeah. Wait, you want my phone number? You mean the 3701? <laughs> How did you know my number? It was a guess. He's amazing, isn't he? You guys are really great. But I better go now. I gotta figure out what to tell my dad about the window. You want me to talk to him? That's okay. Good. You want to go get something to eat? Yeah. She's beautiful, isn't she? Yeah. You think she likes me? Definitely. Yeah, you know, I've, uh, I've seen Debbie Kessler. And, uh, but well, she's pretty, you know, but I, I don't think she's as good looking as Cosmo. I don't think it's a contest, Dad. Huh? I mean, Debbie Kessler is very fine. It's okay, Mr. D. Beauty's in the eyes of the beholder. Let me tell you something about beholders. Have you seen any lately? They're ugly. Oh.